How's it going? My name is Brent from Encore, and today we are working on a GMC Sierra. We're gonna go ahead and tackle this hood. A couple things for you to know is that one, I've never done this hood, and two, I'm gonna be using some SunTech material instead of our normal premium shield. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and start a little bit early on this video. I wanna show you how to use this one pass squeegee. It'll just be super fast, and then we'll get to the install. So I found that going into the recesses like this can be difficult so i like to squeegee the flat parts out like this and then i'll go ahead and turn the squeegee this way to go through the recesses So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and tack. Let's see. These look great in here and we don't want too much stress in here. Otherwise these are gonna lift up and continue to pop up in the recess there. But we do need to get rid of some of these, these fingers in the bottom. So I think, or in the front actually. So what I think I'm gonna do is put a little stretch from left to right in the front and see how that works for us. Normally I'd start in the back corners, but that doesn't seem like a great plan on this one. All right, let's tack this one down. See how well that wants to stay stuck down to such a small part. Plus headlights, the paint protection is almost never as sticky on the plastic as it is on the paint. All right, just go ahead and come on over here. Getting a little bit of pre-tacking. That should be okay though. Then I'm just gonna try and eliminate some of these fingers as well as make sure we don't have any coming across there. All right, we'll see how this goes. All right, let's get, let's get some more slip solution in there since we're having a little bit of a pre-tack. Make sure this is dipping into that valley without too much uh, stretch on it. We're getting a lot of extra material in there. And then this is looking pretty good. That's gonna be something we can deal with. It's not, that's not much of a finger. And then we're gonna go ahead and tack right here. There's a fender. Okay, also keeping an eye Right there, make sure we have plenty of extra material for that recess. Okay, let's go ahead and get that on the other side as well. Let's get rid of some of this pre-tacking. You know, it's a good idea on, on hoods. They take a little bit longer to get to certain areas because normally you're gonna do like half the hood 
and then come over to the other side. It's a good idea to use a little bit of extra soap in your slip solution on these. We actually usually, we actually, I would normally put in some, uh, normally we keep an extra bottle for just for this situation. This doesn't want to stay down that good. And since we've already stretched back, we're back there, we know that we're not going to have any more stretching to do on this. So I'm going to go ahead and put some tack on there and then tack that to the back of the, or underneath of the hood and then squeegee this part out. That way we don't have any issues with it popping off the headlight again. There we go. No more pre-tacking. Let's do this. Okay, so what I'm going for here again is to make sure we've got some for the recess and then pull back enough to get rid of this. Ah, uh, that finger right there. All right, we're gonna get rid of a lot of these larger air pockets. Mm. That one's gonna keep coming back up, that's okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and start squeegeeing this out. Let's see, what order do I want to do this in? Let's go ahead and get most of the, what I can reach all the way over. All right, so pulling it this way with the squeegee will also help eliminate some of the fingers that were right here and then bring it down into this recess, which I don't think we'll have any issue getting uh, rid of. It also just wouldn't have hurt to go straight up with it. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and bring the rest of this center down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tack that part as well. Now let's see if we can get rid of a lot of this extra moisture or slip right now. All right, and then we'll go ahead and, and squeegee this out. So what I wanna do here is I'm actually gonna bring all of this, I'm not gonna take much of this that way. Most of it's gonna be brought towards me. Just make sure you get good even pressure when you're going over this ridge and then dropping down. And then same thing with through here. You wanna hit that valley and then come up. Okay, let's go ahead and, I lied apparently. I'm gonna go ahead and push some of this out the front. Don't necessarily need to tack that down right away, apparently. Okay. And then we can go ahead and get back here. And actually I'm gonna leave that for a moment and then come back to it so we can get a little bit of tack underneath there. So in this part, 
What I'm gonna do is get this back to stick down first. That way it doesn't continuously try to pop up. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, what I did there was put some tack in there, flatten it out on this edge, and then I'm gonna hold that in place while I go ahead and squeegee some of this out. Hmm, a little bit of fingers coming up here on the side. See if we can lift this and help those stay down. So if you lift it up at all and you get some dry areas because they were already previously stuck down, you want to make sure and get either some uh, tack or some slip in there. All right, we'll work our way down towards the front here. I am going to go ahead and see what I can get rid of of this air pocket here. All right, that's looking good. And we'll just continue to work over this edge. It's actually a ridge, <laughs> not an edge. All right, I'm gonna leave that for a minute and I'll put a little bit more slip in there. That way we can get the bulk of the other side out as well. And the reason for that is that that part we can pull back real easy if we get some pre-tacking. This part's gonna be much more difficult if it's like in here somewhere to take care of that, to pull it back to get that pre-tacking out. All right, let's go ahead. So as you see, I'm coming across with this and I've got a lot of fingers kind of like this and that's to get good pressure. If I'm coming this direction with the soap or this, if I'm coming this way with the slip solution, then I'm also going to put a little bit of an angle on the squeegee. And that helps all of it, all, you know, all the excess go to the bottom instead of trying to go over the top. This time, let's just try going straight up with all of this. See how that looks versus uh, bringing it this way. Okay, great. And then this one, I'm gonna go ahead and work our way up from the front back and we'll see what that looks like. Get rid of some of this excess slip. All right, and we'll work our way over this you know, through the valley and over this other, this ridge here. Oh no, I've got a, <laughs> looks like potentially arm hair right here. Let's take care of that. All right. Okay, and leaving this untacked actually looks pretty good. I am gonna kinda hold it right here in place and hold all this down while I'm working on the rest in hopes that that will hold down on that edge and I'll be able to let up. It'll tack there basically is what I'm saying mm -hmm. while I'm working on the rest of this. Let's get all this back down again. Okay, I like that. 
sure you get everything out of this recess. I could see it'd be pretty easy to leave a puddle in there. And we definitely don't want to do that. across these ridges I like to use extra pressure on them because when when we pull this down to here and tack it we're putting a lot of extra tension on the ridges not so much you know like the valleys in here but we're definitely putting extra tension on here which will cause it to push to stretch push the slip solution out and then begin to tack so some extra pressure on there when you're going across it can be helpful because if you do happen to hit an area that's tacked a little bit and you're pulling that slip through there, it's easy to then leave that slip behind in an air bubble or air pocket, or I'm sorry, it's easy to leave that behind in a water bubble form. So, but if you put more pressure, you have much more possibility of pulling right through that little spot that may be tacked down. All right, I have my finger sitting over here and that worked out real good for getting that to stick down. Go ahead and get this down here. I definitely got some free tack in there. So go ahead and lift this up now that the top is stuck down. And we're not really gonna put much for tension on it, but we are gonna make sure that it's laying flat. And we'll go ahead and uh, actually, Let's put tack solution in here. Do the same thing as I did on the other side. All right, let's take care of that valley on the other side. So another great pro tip is to use your race ramps in reverse and to stand on them when you're working on something this tall. All right, let's fill this up with some tack solution. There's a little bit extra of a finger there and I think that might be from pulling it this way. So let's go ahead and see if we can kind of split that up a bit and then hold that down. Should be able to still kind of squeegee out through that spot. Let's go ahead and run that back, get that down and then I'll hold that with my finger and then we'll bring all the rest of this away from that area. I'm gonna do a little swipe and hold here to get these edges to stay down. I'll hold down that little recess there. And then let's go ahead and take it over this one. I'll hold that down for a second or two. All right, just kind of fill in for any water pockets left behind while I'm waiting for this part to tack down. Everything feels good there. All right. Now I think where there was a tiny, in that upper part, there was a tiny little recess and the material was popping up a little bit there. So let's get that down. And then we have a little bit here coming up. See, oh, there is a little bit of this coming up in this recess as well. And a little bit across the top. This is that part I was talking about that I was certain was coming up a little bit. Okay, there's just a couple very minor fingers here. Oh, that's looking good. All right. 
we'll just go over the edge and hold. Swipe and hold. As you've probably heard me say, I don't know, if you've watched the channel like a whole bunch of times. All right. That feels great. Everything is good and stuck down. Let's take care of this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just squeegee this out and then I'll go ahead and do that swipe and hold. <laughs> Who's tired of hearing that? <laughs> I never said that out loud so many times in my life, in my career. Oh, that's not the right stuff. All right, let's see if there's anything else not sticking down across this front. Everything else is looking good. Let's get that spot down. And then I think then, oh, little one right there. All right, that's all staying down good. Get this spot. Depending on how well this is sticking down to the hood, we'll decide whether I go ahead and trim this now or give this about 10 or 15 minutes to really kind of cure. And then I would come back and trim it. But this seems like it's doing good, so let's go ahead and uh, trim this right away. Mm. All right, so I got a pair of uh, Ulfa scissors here and we're gonna go ahead and work our way across. I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch hanging over. Let's see, what kind of corner do I wanna? I'm gonna try leaving the corner long and then we'll do the melt method for that. All right, so I'm putting some tension on it back towards me, which you guys have probably heard me say a million times. As well as I'm using my pointer finger and some of the other fingers behind it to keep a nice straight line. Just makes it easier to cut that way as well as looks better underneath the hood. Okay, let's just go up, let's continue up and go up this side, and then we'll start going across the top. All right, let's see if I can get this lifted up. Or that, the gap in between the two panels is getting pretty thin. And we're gonna need a little bit more hanging over than that. So this corner here is looking pretty sharp as far as its angle. You know, that's a, a nice solid 90 degree and it's pretty small. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that at a little bit more of a 45 on that one. And that'll make that easier to wrap. I got a little wide there. That'll be okay though. Pretty much nobody's gonna see the material on the back side. Oh, I still got a little finger right. Oh no, I don't. That's just a, uh, I don't know if you could see that. <laughs> it's a little bit of the, in the recess there, so I'm catching some light on it. Looks like a finger, but it's not. All right, let's see if I can do this left-handed now.
All right, again, I've got it. this coming up just a little bit there. You know, like I said, this is my first time, in, or not my first time, no, that'd be a lie, uh, but it's, you know, it's been quite a while and I don't normally install this material. We might be switching over to them. So, you know, and this was a 72 inch roll that I had. Actually, the premium shield that we install doesn't come in a 72 inch roll anymore, so you have to use the SunTech from them. And that's why we've got this roll here. And 72 just happened to fit on the width of this really well. So, and we don't use a 72 inch a lot. It's not needed on a lot of most vehicles. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to use some of it. Also get a little bit more practice with it. All right, let's see if I can get reach all the way across there. All right. So this backside got a, I don't know, it's fine, but you know, there's a, it's a little bit more wavy. I think it's gonna be, it's totally fine though. Nobody's really ever gonna see the backside. If they open the hood, there's definitely more possibility of them seeing the front side. Okay, let's go ahead and rinse these edges. One more time. All right, go ahead and do our pre tack. I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and do our pre-wrap. And I'll kind of just do, I'm gonna do this edge here. Maybe I'll stop at a couple spots and show you exactly what I'm doing, but this gets pretty repetitive here. It's pretty much the same thing all the way around. Just wrapping the material around to the bottom, or at least to, the side here somewhere, keeping good even pressure and then putting a lot of pressure on it underneath so that that stays down. And this will just make for a faster final wrap on the, with the material. There's, let's see. Now on this vehicle, you wanna keep this part hanging over pretty short. This, and what I've got here is great. So if you do leave a little, you know, quarter inch or a little bit less, you'll be in good shape. There's actually some, there's a piece of plastic here that you're gonna bump into. These type of areas, I wouldn't, ex well, it actually stood down pretty good. I would kind of expect to get some more popping up right there. I mean, as far as if one of the areas wasn't gonna do a great pre-wrap, I would expect it to be, yeah, see, it's coming up a little bit and that's fine. I would expect that to really be in those areas that the film bunches up a bit. So these areas, because there's a little bit, that'll be difficult, a little bit more difficult in this area too for the material to stay stuck down on this pre-wrap. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. <laughs> you can keep going. I'm uh, I'm getting bored of pre-wrapping. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Awesome, well I appreciate you taking a look. If you found anything useful, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Uh, one more tip. If you're a little bit newer at installing paint protection film, it's also a good idea at this point to go ahead and dry this hood off. Wipe it down with your towel, dry that off. Be real gentle while you're doing it. You don't wanna rub the material, you just wanna wipe the moisture off. And what that's gonna do is allow you to be able to see the hood a bit better, so you'll be able to tell if you left any water pockets behind.